Hey everybody, it's Eric from epautos.com, your libertarian car guy. Thought I'd do a little rant this morning on the topic of who killed the electric car. Uh, some of you might remember back in the 90s, Michael Moore did a film by that title, and he accused General Motors of having killed off the electric car for the sake of the big oil companies, yada, yada, yada. I've got a slightly different take on that subject. I think it's the government that killed off the electric car, or at least killed off the sensible electric car. Um, Government mandates have made all cars really heavy and really complicated, and that kind of operates across purposes uh, to the electric car concept. If it were possible to make a very light chassis, let's say 12 to 1500 pounds, absolutely doable with modern technology, and then put in an electric drivetrain, electric motor and batteries, so that the total combined package would weigh around 2000 pounds, uh, ideally even less, but let's call it 2000 pounds, uh, you'd have a highly efficient vehicle. You'd also have a vehicle uh, that could go farther um, with less energy and which would be cheaper to manufacture and so cost less. I think it's probably very feasible as a, as a technical matter uh, to build uh, a car like that, an electric car that was designed principally to be a commuter, uh, a commuter car, a city car, a suburban car. Electric cars really aren't meant uh, by nature for long haul trips because of their inherently more limited range and their longer recharge times. However, uh, let's say that you could engineer a lightweight electric car that had a real world average range, average, not best case, but an average range of around 100 to 150 miles. That would be absolutely usable for most people's daily needs. And if you could uh, sell such a vehicle, really sell it, not give it away, but sell it, that is, uh, manufacture it and sell it at a reasonable profit for the manufacturer, uh, somewhere between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars, which is absolutely doable from a technical point of view, then you'd have an electric car that made sense. But what do we have? Uh, we have electric cars that make no sense because of all of the perverse incentives that have been put out there by the government. Uh, it's no accident that Teslas, for example, and almost all the other electric cars on the market as well, uh, emphasize performance, speed, luxury, gadgetry. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with any of those things, but they really are at cross purposes to economy. If you want an economical car, then really the emphasis of the car shouldn't be how quickly it gets to 60 and whether it has a ludicrous speed button on it. But uh, all of the manufacturers who make electric cars are constrained by the same mandates that are in place uh, that all of the manufacturers of conventional cars have to abide by, including all of these, and I always say it this way, safety mandates. Uh, that have made cars very heavy relative to uh, their analogs of the recent past. The average new car weighs somewhere between three and 500 pounds more than an otherwise comparable car from the 80s or the 90s. The reason for that is that the government keeps imposing ever higher crash test standards. Uh, and while you may think that it's a good thing to have a crash-worthy car, uh, and it probably is a good thing to have a crash-worthy car, it comes at a cost. It means that the car is heavy. Also, it doesn't necessarily mean that the car is safer, by the way. Uh, uh, a light car, I used to drive old Volkswagen Beetles when I was a kid, uh, it wasn't an unsafe car unless I hit a tree, and if I didn't hit a tree, it was perfectly safe. So, uh, since I never did hit a tree, during the time that I drove that Beetle, uh, it was just as safe as a practical matter than a brand new Mercedes S-Class or this gigantic Ram truck I'm driving right now. So really what we're talking about is uh, government mandates uh, that uh, require cars to be capable of absorbing impacts in the event of a crash. And my attitude on that is that there's a reason why accidents are called accidents. Uh, or actually, let me rephrase that. Most accidents are not accidents. Uh, they're the result of human error, driver error. The person wasn't paying attention, he was driving too fast, he ran off the road, whatever. It's not really the car's fault, it's the driver's fault. And because of that, most so-called accidents uh, can be avoided by being a good and competent and attentive driver. So, to get back to where we started, if the government had stuck its big fat nose uh, in the manufacture of cars and decreed how cars are going to be manufactured, somebody out there probably would have come up with a very lightweight, high efficient, and low cost electric car that would actually make sense. Uh, and it would not need to be subsidized by the government. It wouldn't need to be mandated. People would probably buy it on their own. Hell, I'd consider it. Uh, if I could buy a 
a, a ten to fifteen thousand dollar or so little electric commuter car that could get me down to the coffee shop where I go to work uh, sometimes um, and not have to use any gas. Hey, that's a pretty cool idea. Uh, I'm not opposed to electric cars, uh, despite being accused of that all the time. I'm not opposed to electric cars. I'm simply opposed to stupidity. Uh, stupidity takes many forms, um, and I'm also opposed to busybodyism and. Uh, preempting people's free choice. You know, we're told constantly that we live in a free country, but really we don't. Uh, we're not free to make decisions for ourselves, uh, even to the extent of the types of cars that we drive. I think the person should be perfectly free to buy a car like my old 73 Beetle that I once had um, and assume the, the higher risk of being injured if he crashes it but for the sake of a lower cost car and a car that's more fuel efficient. But we're all denied that. So instead we have to drive these big and heavy and safe, supposedly, cars that don't get particularly good gas mileage. And also these uh, preposterously overpriced, over heavy, high performance and luxury focused electric cars, which have to be massively subsidized uh, in order for anybody to even think about buying them. And the only people who can really afford to buy them, even with the subsidies, are rich people. So. That's my rant for this morning. Uh, leave your feedback uh, and counter rants up at epautos.com, the Nets Best Libertarian Gearhead site. And thanks for viewing, and we'll catch up with you again soon.